What's up, everybody? It's Ryan, aka Eco Boosted. I'm ready to take a little tour in my 2015 Ford Mustang Eco Boost. Uh, a little about me: I've owned this car for about a month, get a little more. This is your base model, black on black or ebony interior. Uh, let's go for a little drive. Testing. System ready. Thank you, dear. My trusty radar detector. The biggest reason I bought that is because this car likes to sneak up to pretty quick speeds, pretty quickly. So let's uh, let's get on the road. So let's talk about my first impression to this car. Well, it's not my first Mustang. This is, however, my first turbo car ever. Incidentally, it's also my first brand new car that I've ever bought. And for being my first brand new car, I have to say that I'm rather enjoying it a lot. Uh, this is the six-speed manual transmission. It's the 2.3 liter EcoBoost, which any Mustang fan I'm pretty sure has read a little bit about. And I know what this engine's capable of in stock form as well as slightly modified. Uh, it is an absolute blast to drive. You know, looking around the car, and I've heard people complain about the quality of Mustang interiors of previous generations. 95 being one of the worst, I think, as far as overall quality goes. Uh, even some of the Fox bodies, eh, they were a little iffy. My brother owned one years ago. Uh, he had the four-cylinder before they turbocharged it. And that was uh, an interesting design choice that Ford made. But, you know, in this one here, you really feel like the engineers at Ford sat down with a brand new blank sketchbook and kind of went to town and seriously did their homework on a lot of the fit and finishes that they were going to put in this car you know yeah there's there's some things that I would have liked them to do differently you know like my armrest here is a hard plastic but they at least offset the cup holders this time so putting a drink in here like coffee or whatever and still being able to drive the car is actually not too bad uh, in my previous generation Mustang, as I said, I've owned two. I had a 2006 uh, six-cylinder five-speed, triple, uh, sorry, screaming yellow. Fun little car to drive. Uh, the couple of those were in the dead center, and I always, always felt like I had to reach over them every time, you know, there was a drink in there. Made it rather uncomfortable to drive. This one here, you're still kind of modifying how you're grabbing the shifter, but... Overall, I don't have a problem. I don't worry about putting a drink in here. I worry about I'm going to knock the lid off and spill all over my car or whatever the case might be. Handling. This thing handles like a dream. I don't think that it's necessarily on par with some of the supercars that are out there. It's not designed to be. Uh, considering what you pay for this car versus what you pay for a, a supercar, of course not. You know, I'm not unrealistic with my expectations of what this car should be able to do. But what this car does, for what it is, is pretty impressive. You know, I don't certainly expect it to be the fastest car on the planet, but when I get on it, I expect it to go, and it seems to do just that quite happily and quite quickly now, why do I like the Mustang now I've had a couple of friends ask me that question why the Mustang why not a Camaro or a Charger or a Challenger and I, to be honest with you personally I like the design I really started falling in love with Mustangs again when 2005 model year started, the S197 platform. Uh, I was sort of disheartened when the 2009, sorry, 2010 model year came out. Even though it's still the same base platform, some of the tweaks I wasn't a big fan of. 
Uh, specifically, I, I wasn't real sure about the rear end. And this rear end on this car is actually not much different. Well, there's some major differences, obviously. I think the taillights, for one, are, are absolutely amazing uh, on this in this one compared to the you know 11 to sorry 10 to 13, 14 models. But just the real aggressive look that Ford has introduced into this car. The front end just screams anger, but in an elegant way. Elegant anger? I don't know. Not quite as clever as. Some other one-liners out there. Uh, one that comes to mind is uh, <laughs> the dude blew David Patterson's reference to Symphony of Violence when he put his uh, off-road X-Pipe on on his uh, 2013 GT. Um, uh, tip of the hat to you, David. I think your videos are actually pretty damn good, and I enjoy watching them. Uh, and you're one of the reasons I decided to at least try a little video log. I have a problem with the word vlog, but I can always discuss that later. So this car, compared to my last Mustang, while that one was easy to drive, I think this one takes that up a couple of notches. Um, you know, the sh feel of the shifter is different. It, it, it's shorter for one. Uh, the H pattern is a little closer and it can be a little unforgiving at times in this car uh, when I first got the car I had a few mischiefs went to third when I wanted to go to fifth or something to that effect fortunately no catastrophic <coughs> things have happened I did see one guy apparently downshifted from fifth to second and threw a piston out of his car uh, that was just some random online thing I found whether or not that's true, I don't know. But the hole was in the engine was a good size and quite gruesome looking, I must say. Um, but this car is just a blast, kind of all around. And you know, now anybody listening, here's my blinker. I've gone ahead and I've swapped out the front turn signal bulbs to Dio Dynamic 7443 bulb. Uh, that I had to modify, I learned after I bought the bulbs. Uh, for anybody interested in buying a, the switchback bulbs from Dia Dynamics, the 7443 will work, with the exception you have to trim uh, part of the base off so that it fits in the holder properly. Now, the downside to going to LEDs, as many people know, you have hyperblinking, or in this case here, a real weird fast blink then not whatever now it doesn't affect the, the actual blinking pattern outside apparently I'm guessing the body control module handles the actual blinking rates because of the sequential tail lights so the exterior lights blink at the same pace they did before just the internal indicator blinks fast both the clicky sound which I think is actually a manufactured blinky sound um, Although it could be an actual relay, I don't know. I haven't dug deep enough. I know some of the later model Fords, the click you here is actually generated by the computer. It was in a uh, late model Ford F-150 and it had that. And it was just really loud, I thought, coming from the center console or from the uh, instrument panel. Thank you guys for taking the time to ride along with me as I go through my brand new car. I look forward to doing more videos and getting them out there. I do have some plans to do some upgrades to this car. You know, that just all depends on how much, how fast I can raise money to do it. Until then, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time.